Well, hello. Welcome to another edition of Chit Chat Corner with Cat and Grizzly on the Hunt. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Norm. How are you doing, Norm? Yolanda. Hopefully, everybody's doing good. Welcome, Crazy GT. I love that name. Yeah, Try to say that 300 times fast. So cute. D Warm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Yolanda. Norm. So hey, how's everyone. everybody doing, Rebecca? Roger Blair coming up. Kimmy. And then we got Crazy Witch coming in the rear, like always, around <laughs> the corner. So what do we got going on this evening there, Kat? Well, this evening. And B-Man. Welcome, everybody. Hey, B-Man. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, Today, I'd like to introduce you to... Johnson Joshua, who is Danny's brother, he has written a new book. Um, Danny is our boomerang whiz from India. He does a lot of training and promoting and he's just incredible. Uh, We have some footage that we were going to present for uh, how to make boomerangs, but we're having a bit of technical difficulties. Um, Yeah, right. Got to love technology. (laughs) Yeah. So we'll fix that up later. And I'd like to introduce Bryony Chattel. He was my grandfather, Frank Donnellan's shadow growing up. He knows everything there is to know about booms, um, aerodynamics, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and at the end of the video, if if we can load it, there'll be a list of all the recommended boomerang makers and throwers so that everybody can awesome. purchase, you know, from reputable makers. Awesome. So I hope everybody's doing well. Well, let's bring him on. Welcome to the show there, kind sir. How you doing? Very good, thank you. Well, nice to have you. So introduce yourself to everybody in the world. We are worldwide right now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very comforting. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you been in the boomerang business? Ever since I grew up at about seven or eight years old. Wow. That's crazy. I just happened to, I happened to have the the best person helping me, with my Frank Dallin, and his family have always given me the best chance possible to promote the boomerang and have fun. Well, that's good. That's good. And Bryony's done a lot of, um, no, I wouldn't call it work, but. Um, training with people in wheelchairs so that they can play That's too right. with the boomerangs a lot of help done with um, people with lesser abilities so that everyone can join in and so it's a sport for everybody you know any form of ability or lack of well, a good. lot of times i've enjoyed showing people how simple a boomerang is but it's potential for um, rehabilitation was what we really enjoyed seeing work yeah it's amazing what you know how happy a person can become just by belonging you know um getting out there with other people and sharing how they feel and and with the boomerangs and the wheelchairs, it's such a great way to make a lot of people happy. Yep. You know, that don't usually get out or don't get the chance to belong in a situation like that. I've enjoyed the, the pleasure of having uh, made friends of family and individuals. And I'm very grateful that like today, for example, um, enjoying another way of expressing the good that comes from boomerangs. True. There's so many good aspects. Just fresh air for a start. (laughs) (laughs) And grounding, you know, the whole spirit of bringing everything back to one, really. Mm. And I I must, um, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention on the basis of my training When I was in Qantas originally, uh, I had a lot of instructors for aerodynamics and 
that assisted me improving the, the boomerangs for certain weather conditions. So I've just got to send Danny a message. I won't be sick. Okay. <sighs> um. Yeah, I know. So Gary just jumped on. There's Gary. Uh -huh. There's Gary. There's Gary. Right. Hey, guys. How you doing? Oh, hi, right, guys. Guys. Good, thank you. Hi, good hi, to guys. see you. Hey, Kathy. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Thank you. Great. Good to hear and I'm sorry, what's the name? Bryony. This Bryony, is Bryony Sattel. Oh, oh, hey, hey, how are you doing? Very good, thank Very you. Good, thank you. Super. We got a lot of echo, echo on, on your end, end Gary. Gary. On my end? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I wonder why that is. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if that's uh, <laughs> something I can adjust, or uh, uh, is it because of the room I'm in, maybe, or? No, it's, so, it's no, like we got, like an, we extra got an extra app open. open. Huh. Oh, maybe. Let, let me uh, let me take a look and see if there's something. Maybe I hit something. Brody, there we go. Brody, 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 Brody. Brody. Oh, still oh, still Is that better? I don't know. Uh, testing. Testing. No. Testing. No. <laughs> Attention, Kmart shoppers. And now number three, we have our blue light special. Yes, and if you act now, we're throwing a sandy game again. And it's nice and nice and jobs and even on your taxes. But wait, that's not all. Pizza first on your block to have the Swan Lake Peak Nose Kylie for those people that really bother you in your life, you know? <laughs> oh, Gary. I'm sorry, excuse me. <laughs> we're still echoing. Now, if if I mute him, we don't echo. So it's like you got an like uh you got YouTube open or a Facebook open or li another live open? Let, let me take a look here again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see. How about if I try and close all and I'll re, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll reconnect. Oh, Is yeah. that okay? Yeah, yeah, let's try that. Okay. Maybe Bryony, that'll help. Um, yeah, it was terrible. Um, echo. That's better. <laughs> Bryony, Gary has a massive collection. He's probably got one of the biggest collections in the world of boomerangs. Right. Extremely gifted. He'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about yourself there, sir. The, the best way I can um, describe the boomerang's gift to, to me was that I had so many... Um, supportive people um, encouraged me all the time and when people used to say thank you for whatever I've done the demonstration or something or teaching one child how to throw a boomerang the the pleasure that brings brought me and has continues to bring me is that I'm making someone else's life a bit more enriched. Right. No, absolutely. You know. All right, let's try Gary again here. Okay. Let's see. If that... <laughs> we have to make him behave. Hey, you back? Yes, you better make <laughs> me behave. Good luck, Kathy. Now, <laughs> now it's working. Now, oh, now it's right. perfect. Very good. good. Excellent. All right. <laughs> good to hear. Yes. You know what, Kelly? Yeah. So everybody's doing well. It's very hot here in Florida. I want to let you know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a, a, a just a little bit hot uh, in Fahrenheit. I think we got to ninety four, ninety five today, and uh, a feel like yes. temperature of about one hundred and ten. So it's terrible. What's that? Forty degrees uh, Celsius, something like that. Combusting, almost combusting. Yeah. It's it's very uh, very unfortunate that we're here so much. Um, bad news with the fires in America this the last couple of days. And uh, yeah. I'm sure I speak for many people that we wish uh, our only way is to wish everyone safety while they're still just controlling the last bit of the fire. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I was up in Ohio um, doing some boomerang presentations. I flew up there and um, 
we had the uh, Canadian wildfires, uh, uh, a lot of the smoke mm. uh, down through Ohio, you know, as the uh, jet stream picked it up and, and brought it down. And <clears throat> it's been a pretty tough summer up there from what I understand. Terrible. Every, everywhere yeah. on the Northern Hemisphere. It's like you're copying what we copped a couple of years back. Yeah. And then I I, I'm thinking you're going to get a lot of rain, like flash flooding, um, like we got. The, oh, wow. Yeah, because it came – when we've got two blue moons at the moment that we're in the right. middle of. Right, we're in the middle of. There's a whole sure. lot of action going on with volcanoes, earthquakes, and all this new mm. eighth of the eighth yeah. energy. It's full yeah. on. Like I'm Absolutely. expecting you get a, a lot of rain coming. I hope you don't, but. Well, you know, we're in hurricane season here, and that goes until uh, the end of November. And um, uh, I haven't really paid attention to see if there's anything out there that's threatening. Now, the nice thing about mm -hmm. St. Petersburg, Florida, is it has its own weather system, really, guys. I mean, we're between the Gulf of Mexico and uh, the Tampa Bay. So our temperature mm -hmm. never gets above 93 degrees, and that's what I've always said. But it actually got to 94 mm -hmm. And for a little bit, it got to 95, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before at 2 o'clock, which is unheard of because they've been keeping track of the weather for that long. And the mm -hmm. last hurricane to touch here was in uh, 1921. So we've had the ed edge of uh, Hurricane Irma. Uh, I, was, I experienced Hurricane Irma five years ago or something. And then uh, also uh, uh, last year, Hurricane Ian. Um, uh, I actually flew home from Ohio. I'd flown up there to do presentations. Then they said all the spaghetti noodles showed it was coming in to the Bradenton, Tampa, mm -hmm. St. Pete area. So I, I jumped on a plane that night, came right back here. Um, you know, to I have an elderly gentleman I take care of, and he's got to evacuate from the, uh, uh, you know, uh, evacuation A area, which is a big flood zone. So mm -hmm. I got him here to the house and all that stuff, but nothing ever happened. I really didn't have to come back. It, it missed us completely. That's good. Uh, so, that's good. Yeah, that's good. But but just so you know, I mean, yeah. And remember, the warmer the temperature means the faster the air molecules, the more energy is in the air. So the more energy in the air, we're going to have stronger storms. Okay? A hurricane, which is fed by all of that humid, warm air in, in the Atlantic, yep. is, is just getting that much more, which means those category three, fours, and fives will come a lot more. Uh, um, a lot more frequent. Yeah, it's yeah. erratic. Like the the weather we had after the fires was erratic and and dramatic. You know, like <coughs> hard and fast. Um, no one was ready for it. Like we all wanted rain. Everyone's praying for rain, but they didn't pray mm. carefully. You know, like in their wishes, like gentle yeah. rain, great spirit, not buckets. Mm. <laughs> so. Oh yeah. Yeah. And. Um, Brian, has hey, some I, yeah, Brian, I yeah. see some boomerangs behind you. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yes, the, um, the the few that I've just yes, managed to fit in the in the viewing viewing part of the screen, um, I've got some of the Frank Denell and original plastics, and several other oh, yes. the wooden ones that have come from various makers over the years, but I've. Uh, um, I've got um, enough boomerangs to, to suit any weather condition, I can guarantee you. Oh, wonderful. Ryan, you know, um, I, um, I think you could test me and you could take any boomerang in your collection and you could show yep. it to me. I could tell you who the maker was, what it's made from, how it'll fly. And Very good. And he's gone. And he's back. <laughs> so what happened? Are you? Are you? Are, are we testing your magic there, Gary? No, we must be. I don't know what happened there. All of a sudden, you're there, and not. I don't know. We got a bad connection. <laughs> you know when to cut me off. Brian's so done a lot of aerodynamics like you have, Gary. Oh, wonderful! He worked with Qantas for a long, long time, and. Um, Brian was Poppy's offsider, like Shadow, as Poppy was growing, like as they were both growing up, I guess. So, yes. and Brian, yeah. where, where are you Hi, located Jim. at? Hi, Johnson. Thank you, Poppy. Gary. Johnson, you there? Hi, guys. Hi, Johnson. Hey. Am I audible? 
Yep. Oh yeah, you're 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 live. <laughs> Welcome That's to the it. show. Hey there, my man Grizzly. How you been? Doing good. Doing good. Hey, nice good to see, see you again. again. Gary there, Catherine there. Nice to see you guys too. You too. Good to Thank you, Catherine, home for home inviting again. me. Um, would um would you like to introduce your book now, and then we can chit chat about the booms after your book? I'm I'm so sorry I couldn't hear you properly, Catherine. Oh, would you like to present your something. new book? Can you hear now? May can I join again? I yeah. can't hear you guys. Oh, have you got she your mute? Let, you let me rejoin. Let me join again. Okay. Just give me a second. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Everybody's playing Houdini on us right now. I know. Yeah. That's really One strange. Of those guys. I know. And, okay, here's Suno. Let's see. And, he, he's, he's muted, isn't he? Yeah, he doesn't have a picture or uh, his, his thing's muted too. So, yeah, Suno's a great guy. Beautiful. Yeah, and uh, uh, but Brian, I wanted to find out now where are you located at in Australia? Are you in the Sydney area, Melbourne? Yes, <laughs> um, Sydney, about half an hour's drive from the airport. Okay, so I, I think I I think I visited you. Uh, didn't I visit with you back in uh, the late 90s and early 2000s? I was in Australia in 96, 97, 2000. I was with Robbie Crawl. Yes, I, yes I, I remember the circumstances, not, but uh, that was um, one of our public demonstration shows, maybe? Yep, yep. We had done, we had done a number of presentations. Um, um, uh, while we were in Sydney and Melbourne, and uh, and of course Robbie and I hit every um, antique shop and, uh, oh, uh, yes. and and underground for the ancient Aboriginal pieces. Yes, understood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, How many uh, Aboriginal uh, pieces recently, do you? Have? Yeah, uh, I've uh, <clears throat> excuse my cough. <clears throat> yeah, um, I've only got a few compared to like what obviously what you you know about, um, but. We had several good um, uh, how you call it? Ta tandem displays with um, our indigenous people as well. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, and um, did you ever get to uh, work in the wind tunnels at all, and, and maybe uh, strap one of the Kylies or a return boomerang uh, in a wind tunnel to check out the airfoils from something in the 18th century? Absolutely, we we were able to use some of the equipment acquired us um, quietly with our supervisors uh, to show how much the aerofoil has a life of its own with wind. Doesn't it? Oh yes. And did you notice, like Rusty Harding, the retired aerospace engineer here in America? Um, I brought him to Australia in 2000 at the World Championships in Melbourne. And um, oh, yes. yeah, and you remember Rusty used to say semi crude airfoils are the best yeah. airfoil for a boomerang, right? And you notice yeah. that when you put it in the wind tunnel. And here the Aborigines were fluting the surface of their Kylies and their return boomerangs, which right. made them fly so much more better, you know, so much better and more stable. And, yes. and and behave the way they want them to, you know? Yes. And, and, yeah. and and then, you know, Duncan McLennan there in King's Cross, Sydney, you know, he was such a good friend. And he's like, you know, on the hunting sticks, on the throw sticks, the Kylie's, he, yes. um, the Central Desert ones would have a twist on the negative on the dingle arm, you know, the follow arm exactly. would have negative angle of incidence. And, and, and I'd say, well, you know why they did this? And I'd start explaining the science and he'd go, He'd say, uh, oh, Jerry, come on and walk that way, mate. No worries. And, and, and I'd say, oh, really? You got 75 of them here and they all work the same way, huh? You know, and stuff. But it, but there's actually a major reason why to each and everything that the Aborigines did and for them to have controlled flight, a minimum of 15,000 years before the Wright brothers flew the first airplane. It's amazing. Yes. It's, it's so incredible, Brian. It's just, it just, it gets me, yeah, I get a little crazy. Uh, I'm, I'm passionate about it. I can understand that, yes. The, I'm not sure if you can see this beaming I'm um, showing. Can you see an image on your screen? I yes. sure can. Mm -hmm. We're going to okay. make them big here. There we go. Yeah. Oh. These 
these aerofoils, I've, I've always spoken about aerofoils with people as saying, you are the captain of the aircraft and you have the wings as you want. So I've always encouraged people to go ahead and make their own yes. so they can see for themselves that, yes, your designs may be unusual, but they are perfectly aerodynamically thanking you for making them. Isn't that amazing? Absolutely. I totally agree with you. That's wonderful. I love your lead edges and your trailing edges are quite yes. quite deep. Is that a uh, is that a hoop pine or a, a plywood very, there? David? Very very simple plywood. Yes, I I, I went through many many hundreds of pl pl plywood pieces over the years, but this yes. is the best example to be able to show when we oh, sure. do school shows as well. Yes. And uh, you you made a number of boomerangs out of the coach wood that they used to make, That's the right. beautiful coach wood plywood. And we yes. can't get that anymore. But you do know that Jeff Lurie still has about nine to 12 of those sheets uh, in uh, Baruga in South Wales there. Uh, or no, where is he at? Aubrey? No, he's not in Aubrey. We're Arthur and Les Chinetsky. He's just up, up the road from Jackie Byam who's in Baruga. And why can't I think of where? Uh, <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, but you know, you know, uh, but he still has some sheets there. And I've always, uh, yes. you know, I mean, shipping them back to America would be a, a shame and, and an extreme expense. But uh, I would love to have some more coach wood. That's, that yes. was great plywood. Yes. Well, that, that was partly one of uh, Frank's absolute uh, pleasures was he used to make some beautiful coach wood marine ply boomerangs. And his artwork was... <laughs> I, I would never be able to um, emulate his work. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have the list of everybody. Bluey Roberts, you know, I mean, how do you how do you compete uh, painting a Australian scene, you know, uh, on a boomerang yeah. and with Jeff Lurie and, of course, Arthur, Arthur and Les Janetsky in Aubrey, New South Wales. I mean, the Rolls Royce of boomerangs. And uh, yeah. uh, they were just really amazing, the history and the people. Uh, even Stephen Slady or uh, Brother Brian Thomas and – um, yes, you know yes. Bob Burwell and and uh, Bunny Reed and you know yes. of course Frank well, Frank Allen and Joe Timbery yeah. and uh, um, uh, Bill Onis. You know how many yeah. boomerangs? Yeah, just fantastic. Oh yeah, uh, we we in Australia overall have had a, a how do you put it um, a family growth of everyone interested in the boomerang. And wanting to and, and enjoying a challenge or two along the way for your best best efforts. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, 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 Leanne Loveland uh, uh, was a uh, uh, Lauren Hawes' daughter. Yeah, Lauren Hawes. She's still, yeah, she's yeah. still throw, yeah she's still making there the stones throw boomerangs and yep. and uh, yeah everybody's uh, and of course Robbie Crawl and. Uh, yeah. We go on and on with Roger Perry oh, yeah. and everybody, but yeah, it's really one, great. One lady you probably didn't meet or maybe only heard her mention, my own second cousin lady, Sue, she was at the time Poppy's lady to be able to show the people that ladies can throw boomerangs as well. Oh, wonderful. You know what? I, I always say that at my presentations. I said, uh, you know, uh, uh, Girls can compete right along with the guys and there's no handicap. You can do everything that we do, whether you're catching it one hand behind the back or you're doing a foot hacky or you're throwing a maximum time a lock boomerang. They, they can do it all. And there's proof of that. And, you know, Betsy Miali Gix um, and um, uh, Yoko from um, Japan yes. and um, so, so many great throwers, these women throwers yeah. that have been on U.S. teams, you know, or yeah. other teams. Really great. Well, Jeff, when you mentioned Japan – my wife is Japanese. And oh, wonderful. Over all the years we've been married, we still are, uh, how you put it, we make an amusing set of challenges so that we can keep the, keep the, um, the, the humor alive. <laughs> oh, that's great. Absolutely. Hey, um, you didn't come to the World Championships in 94 in Hiratsuka, Japan, or in, in 2006? 
Um, well, did I, you? We got married. We got married in '93. Ah, '93. Um, okay. Yeah, so that, that was that was our our introduction to to everything going on. Wonderful! Oh my goodness! Inter internationally, though, with with Japan, um, having the chance to go to Expo '70 was my main um, waking up in in professional circles. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, then you know all the people that I know, and we're all family, and my goodness, you and I got to talk for hours. I'm going to call you. You're never going to sleep again. It's going to be great. Isn't I'm that right, Kathy? Right, Isn't that right, Kathy? <laughs> Ask Suno. He'll tell you. He said, well, we can talk for hours and hours. It never ends. <laughs> can you hear us, Johnson? Hi there, Catherine. Oh, good. Okay. Hey, everyone. Hi. Now we're right. So Yolanda wants to know, uh, mm. how long has the boomerang been around? Mm. Thousands of years. Yeah, let me, let me give you an idea. I think uh, yep. the return boomerang uh, certainly is at least a minimum of 15,000 years. Yep. Um, mm. But the actual hunting sticks and throw sticks go back, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of years because – all of our ancestors were throwing sticks and stones, you know, uh, uh, Africa, Asia, Europe, you know, they found that uh, mammoth tusk in 1947 in a cave in Krakow, Poland, and, and discovered it was a throw stick. And that was uh, 24,000 years old. But trust me, if they could have survived the weather uh, and being in the outback, the Aborigines, um, when they when they arrived originally, they thought fifty to sixty thousand years. Now they're saying it's been one hundred twenty to one hundred forty thousand years. And the cave paintings are showing them coming in in the northwest, and they have the throw sticks with them. And the topography was perfect all over Australia for hunting stick than it would be like for a bow and arrow without having that technology. So they perfected it, and it evolved into a returning stick. Um, yes. which we could discuss and talk about starting fires and producing an airfoil by accident yep. Um, yep. and yeah. all that. But, you know, and, and uh, uh, so without going into too deep, so, so yes, the return boomerang really truly is only from Australia. Uh, Jacques mm -hmm. Thomas, back in the early 90s, 1990, he put out the book um, um, Boomerangs of the Pharaohs, and he had gone – to um, King Tut's, uh, the um, uh, Cairo Museum, to inspect these these wonderful uh, throw sticks, or boomerangs, as they say, that were in the right. tomb. And he he went there with the observation or with the idea that he was going to prove there was a returning boomerang. So he was allowed yeah. to inspect these. But when he photographed the airfoils and what was there, he two-dimensionally took the shape and then put it on the plywood and put the proper airfoils on. And Chet Snoffer and I got some from Ben Rue, and we were throwing and catching them on the field at one of the tournaments. And yeah. yet that shape we can make come back. But oh, yeah, looking yeah. at the originals, which, of course, we could never throw, but looking at yeah. it professionally and looking at the airfoils, it was a hunting stick. It did not return. Therefore, I, I still say, you know, the, we, the definition – a boomerang isn't a boomerang unless it boomerangs. And my, my logic here in America when I talk about it is that the return boomerang has to be uh, uh, differentiated, at least graduated from the hunting stick, the Kylie, uh, yes. the K-Y-L-I-E, yeah. and the weapon that was used. And, and, and that's what brought down the game. And a return boomerang was used as a decoy. You could throw them in a flock of birds, sidearm, and you might get dinner. But, but at you know, mass times velocity equals momentum. So uh, a, a return boomerang at two to five ounces or something, uh, like I've said before, if I was flown in on a helicopter uh, in, in the outback and, yeah. uh, uh, and Brian and I were there and he had two Kylie's in his hand. So the Swan Lake Beak Nose Kylie and a Central Desert Throw Stick and I had my competition bag and they'd give us <laughs> five gallons of water and said, okay, yeah. we'll see you guys in five days. You go that way, you go that way. Let's see. Well, Brian would put on, 10 pounds and I'd be an anorexic by the time I got back. <laughs> I couldn't catch a cold. And he, 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 he'd be asking me how I want my kangaroo, you know, medium, medium. Well, what, what, what do you, how do you like your meat? Because he, he'd be high off the hog and can, catching lizards like the Aborigines did. Hunting sticks. We can, we can definitely get dinner with a return. Yep. Boomerang, nah, 
uh, that's why we have to differentiate, and that's it's very difficult uh, in the like world that. defining yeah. it as a weapon and a, and a returner. Yeah, so a sport, a sporting instrument. So, yeah, yeah. I can understand many of the interpretations over the years have taken some scholarly uh, turn points. Yeah. But, uh, can you, you see on the screen again one of these beamings I'm holding now? Oh yes, sir! Yeah. I sure can. Well, I'm I just I'm see. just trying to give you the best angle. Yeah, that's a mulga wood, uh, and there's a is yeah. that a lizard on there? A gecko or, or yes, a, uh, yeah, li lizard yeah. and gecko and so forth. But now the the numbers I wrote on this just for explanation, <clears throat> the twenty tw the the twenty nine is the gra uh, grams weight the gram weight 750 mm -hmm. is the dimension point to point ah 750 okay wonderful and here uh, i thought it was a price tag and i was going to say <laughs> sold <laughs> <laughs> I, I will i will happily um confer later for price point <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, you know what? Um, I'm I, I'm known as the black hole of boomerangs. Not even light boomerangs can escape my grasp. And you know, there's fifteen thousand boomerangs, so I'm a little obsessed. Just a little. <laughs> yeah, I like it. May yeah. May I interrupt just for Please. a moment? And may I present Johnson? Ah, oh, Johnson, come back. Again? Come back. He is a boomerang. He'll be back. Yeah. I know they're having difficulties with the, their comms as well you know over there, so I thought if we do it first, because he's going to yeah, present his new book. Absolutely. And, and Kathy, I got to uh, uh, review the book and edit the book, and it's really wonderful. Um, uh, for for This will really help get the word out in, in, in India. And um, uh, he's – um, uh, they're, doing a, they're doing a fabulous job. Uh, Sunil and Danny uh, and Dinesh – and uh, persona and stuff. The, it's it's just a wonderful thing. They're really getting the word out, and they're educating the public and promoting the sport. And it's just a wonderful thing to see. And with that many people, um, maybe he's popping back in here. And uh, yeah, come on, um, Joe. He might... Johnson, yeah. are there you right to go? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes. Once sorry, it's done. Yes, I can hear. May you I now. introduce Johnson, please? Johnson is Danny's hey. brother who we all know very well. They're a multi-purpose, brilliant family. And Johnson is another example of brilliance because he's just written a book. So over to you, Johnson. All right. Thank you, first of all, Kat, for inviting me here. And uh, thank you, Grizzly, for having me on the show, bro. Absolutely. I'm glad that uh, I can also see... I can also see... Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, Gary, sir, there, and I don't know yeah. the other person. Hi, nice to meet you, too. So, yes, uh, before we get started, let me show you this uh, book that I have here, right here in my hand. Uh, this book is called Conundrum of Paradox. Thank you. Thank you again. So this one is called Conundrum of Paradox. Uh, the This is the first part of the book, which is called Dark Path to Nowhere. So this book is a fusion of... Uh, science fiction, crime fiction, and horror fiction. So I call it hybrid fiction. Uh, I, I would say that to know more about this, uh, you guys would definitely have to read this. Nice. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Do, do you have it out? Do, do you have it out now? I mean, is it out with a, uh, uh, a book code? We can order the book? I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear. Please, yeah. can you repeat again? I said, um, you have the books printed now, and we can get copies of them. We can buy the book? Yes, yes. You can definitely get copies on Amazon. Oh, great. You can and get the copies on Amazon. What is Wonderful. it about? Without giving anything away. Yes. What is the storyline? Kat, can you please repeat again? What's the storyline about? She's wanting to know. All right, all right. So the story is about a girl who uh, disappeared from her college in very strange circumstances. And there are three prime agencies that are, you know, searching for her. They are looking for her, but they were not able to find her anywhere. But under very strange circumstances, again, after five years, uh, she was found in a different country. So when oh, she returns back... Right up early. Uh, 
yeah <laughs> so she she returns back to her country uh, which is of course india and uh, when she comes back the agencies that were looking for her they they uh, come to her and they ask her uh, so a few questions about like where she was and uh, what all had happened in the past but she she does not remember anything but then okay. the, there's this uh, officer he was very smart and a very intelligent guy he somehow you know finds out a few strange facts so the story is all about that excellent yeah i thought it'd be a good place Thanks. to put on our show because we grizzy and i and all of us tend to go to those odd places wow. quite often where we can't yes. understand Daniel what's told me that you guys were okay perfect wonderful congratulations thank you again yeah thank and you. Uh, yeah. and um uh johnson you can you can send me the uh uh the uh title uh on facebook messenger or something so i can order a book oh there it is definitely under definitely oh, is, it, is it under there yeah conundrum okay, of paradox okay got it conundrum of right. paradox but i'll, I'll share the link there we can add it to this later on <laughs> wonderful oh that's great excellent thank you, thank you again anytime johnson yes um, yes thank you so at the moment where brian is showing us some of the big booms we can't get the footage on jo johnson so we'll have to add the footage to make the booms later on mm -hmm. you know so we can okay. share it one, I, one thing one thing i'd like to comment on with going back with gary's conversation with me um yeah. Gary, have you ever seen a boomerang made for first finger and thumb holding only? First finger and thumb. So by 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 gripping with a notch. Um, I have. Uh, are you talking about ancient Aboriginal pieces, or are you referring no, to modern in day? Case, in this case, it's mo modern rehabilitation. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was going. I was going to um, offer an understanding that different people's rehabilitation program can include the simplicity of holding a boomerang between the thumb and first finger, and that becomes both a mental incentive and a physical success <laughs> yes you can get someone to throw a boomerang so and frank don't know and like absolutely to get the spin and the, and the pop, proper grip when i when i teach people there's the 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 pinch grip where you're making a fist and pinching with the thumb and then we call the pistol grip yep. where you're you're capturing it between yeah uh either you know the first finger second finger some That's people right. even throw with three fingers right yeah. depending on your grip and um uh, and it's what you're most comfortable with and what makes you you know what makes you feel good um but you're absolutely right about the ends of the boomerang uh being modified to uh support that whether you're yeah. throwing a hunting stick or you're or you're throwing a returning boomerang yeah. and uh, when I was, yeah when i was in canada in vancouver i, I was at the um, occupational therapy congress meeting and mm. it was surprising that the internationally that some people had heard of boomerang throwing for sport but not for the specific modified <laughs> designs and the idea of being able to modify a boomerang hasn't been lost on the professional medical people oh nice yeah yeah so um did you did you bring some boomerangs to uh show um, yes i've got i've got a few here at home so i'm i'm in uh, i'm in my garage at home and i've got probably about a thousand different styles wonderful i mean these all uh acacia mulga black wattle root uh, natural elbows or uh mostly plywood yeah, just, just about all and all these big ones are natural timbers. I've, I've only got um, the, how do you put it? the, not saying commercially 
um, for bad word commercial, but commercially, yes, I've still got many good um, tourist type uh, yeah. imagin imaginative design and artwork. So um, I'm looking forward to letting people know more about how to get a boomerang if they want one. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that you probably have a trunk filled with Janetskis there and uh, some Frank Donnellans and Absolutely. a bunch of Bob Burwells and some Bon Bunny Reed, uh, Richie Proof boomerangs. Yes. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure you have a, a whole gamut of stuff that you just, it's in your way and you need, you need, you need it to go where it's going to be appreciated <laughs> and loved. And, and, I'm sorry, is the black hole speaking again? I'm so sorry. I just get <laughs> so carried away. <laughs> in, in, Jap in Japanese, we say, Arigato gozaimasu. Oh, yes. Arigato gozaimasu. Doi tashimasu. Hi. Hi. Between you two, you two would have one of the biggest stashes around, I'd say. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, if we if we take Brian and Robbie and myself, I think that uh, yep. takes care of about you know seventy percent of all the boomerangs on the face of the earth. I mean, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I got to come visit you. I must, Brian. This is yes, yes this is a calling. You'll yeah, have we, to we camp. Will, <laughs> we we will enjoy seeing you at your earliest convenience. Oh, wonderful. I will I will get down there and we will have a blast. I promise you. Um, by the way, the idea of sleeping is going to be uh, it's not going to be on your list for a while. I mean, you'll have, you know, a couple of weeks where you're like <laughs> wide awake and, you know, we're talking. Boomerang. Ask if you ask Robbie mm -hmm. Crawl. I mean, we we were sitting there talking and falling asleep. We've been up for yes. 20 some hours and then we literally were falling asleep talking in his living room. We passed out for about a half hour to an hour. And we woke up and went right to the market and started collecting boomerangs on a Sunday morning. Uh, it was just so much <laughs> funny, uh, so much fun. And uh, yeah. oh, we had the best time. It was just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so the yeah, boomerangs really are guilty. The, the boomerangs are guilty of having good fun. They are, aren't they? I tell you, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I tell everybody, I love it so much. It's everything I am. I'm a scientist, artist, carpenter, athlete, entrepreneur, an inventor, an engineer, motivational speaker, and a teacher all rolled into one. And it's everything I am. And I found my bliss in life. And and I just, I'm engulfed in it. Good. Big time. <laughs> uh, in an outrageous way. Yeah, happy well little Vegemite. <laughs> um, yeah. What's the wind going to be like there for the World Cup in Denver? Uh, Is it windy there? Uh, no, no, it won't. I don't think it will be too bad, actually, uh, because it's in July. Um, yes, it's going to be a higher elevation, so it's going to be equal to 2018 in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So it will be approximately a, um, a 5,700 uh, feet above sea level. So I know this from Gunnison, Colorado in 89 at the U.S. National Boomerang Championships and throwing – I when I designed my fast catches and I tuned them uh, to go 20 meters um, mm. at sea level here, where I'm only about 20 feet above sea level in St. Petersburg, Florida, and I'm throwing my boomerangs, if they're going, you know, 20 and a half meters or 21 meters, if I take them if, and throw them right now in Boulder, Colorado, where we're going to be up near Denver, um, it, the boomerang will actually be going somewhere around 22 to 23 meters out. Mm. So yeah. I will make boomerangs that are going 18 meters here. <laughs> and, and some long distance. <laughs> yeah, and then I'll, I'll put a little lead tape on them uh, to uh, make the boomerang. Uh, you know, I'll adjust it when I get there a week before, and I'll train and practice, and then and yeah. I'll find that, that boomerang that's doing it right. But, again, wind conditions uh, can vary quite a bit, especially when you're in mountainous areas. But I've been to that field before, and – Hopefully, quite nicely. It was. It was in. It was pretty good conditions. I didn't. We didn't have anything outrageous, but you just never know. That's for is sure. Big, is it big enough for long distance? Oh yeah, very big. Oh yeah, so, it's. So uh, they'll have it this you know, time. Three hundred by four hundred meters. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah, I'll send you a link to look at it on Google Maps. You'll see it's just fabulous. I mean, it's a mm -hmm. huge field, and uh, it's right in the town. It's amazing. We've got shops and and hotels and all the stuff around the outside. And uh, this big, huge, massive field in the middle, and it's just wonderful. Yeah. 
the city of, uh, uh, I think it's called Winchester, is looking forward to having us there. Um, it's it's going to be good. Yeah. One more uh, memory about uh, Vancouver for Gary and I. Yes. When when I was teaching the professionals to hop and throw it, one thing I did they didn't expect I did. When you think of a paraplegic person, the idea of balancing their body core weight and mm -hmm. combining their best possible movement across the... There was one quadriplegic gentleman who helped me so much, it's incredible, to understand I could be an example of cross-body, backwards throwing boomerang for a rehabilitation purpose. Wonderful, really. So Absolutely with amazing. the person, awesome. with, with the person throwing the boomerang from their toes across the opposite shoulder, that is equal to mm -hmm. any one of our own ordinary, upright, standing still throws. Right. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So yeah, next time mechanics. you have a chance, next time you have a chance, sit on a chair and my <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> my challenge of humor and seriousness is try throwing a boomerang backwards over your left or right shoulder, doesn't matter, and understand how you've got some muscles in reserve. Wow, wonderful. You know what? I actually gotta tell you that uh, I actually juggle boomerangs backwards um, uh, by, by snapping them backwards. I can, right. I can juggle in the gyms with my boomerangs and backyard boomerangs. Uh, and yeah, I've, I've, I've done that uh, alternately. I've even thrown, you know, left-handed and right-handed and, uh, yeah. you know, figure eights forwards and backwards. Uh, um, yeah. And uh, uh, so that I know exactly what you're saying there. Um, it's, um, uh, yeah, it's really interesting. In fact, I can even, take a, a boomerang and flip it behind my back. Yep. And the boomerang has a right-handed counterclockwise rotation, yes. but yes. it actually goes clockwise like a left-handed boomerang and comes yep. back. And uh, so it's, it's pretty interesting, you know, like an underhand boomerang or underarm boomerang, we call them. That's and right. uh, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, that is really, really neat. Yeah, I noticed that, that you can you can flip them backwards, you can snap them this way. I, see, I figured yep. because I, if I can go right-handed this way, there's no harm in flipping it the other way and being able to snap right. it this way and have to go right around me, come back here. Yep. Yeah. I could demo one in here. I could, you know. I don't know that's how why, I uh, overall, whenever possible, that's why I, I discuss the aerodynamics part of it as being very revealing as to a person's gained ability after throwing boomerangs from unusual angles. Oh yeah, yeah. You learn quick, uh, not too, not too horizontal, <laughs> unless it's a herd <laughs> smash. But, but tell me, uh, Brian, um, mm. in in uh, when you give talks and you've you've yep. you've talked to these uh, aerospace engineers and people at, with Qantas and, and all these, uh, tell me. First of all, most people kind of roll their eyes. I do demos for NASA, and and I, I talk to aerospace engineers, and I have mm. 150 minutes of people in a room. And I do this like four times a year. And, um, you know, I, I ask them, I said, hey, what are, you, what are you working on? You know, and they say, well, yeah. I'm working on pod number 23 for the International Space Station and the electrical system. I said, wow, that's very admirable. That's really cool. You know, and what are you working on? What are you working on? And they said, and I said, well, I work on something that's more complex than all of that. And these guys yeah, roll their right. eyes. They did one of those. They, they do one of those things where they go, oh, yeah, right. Here we go. Yes. Yeah. Who are you? <laughs> and then you say, well, this. The first controlled flying device, yeah, Virginia of Australia right. discovered the most complex flying instrument in the face of the earth. No airplane, space shuttle, or helicopter can show the complexity, and I go on about it. And these guys, I challenge them. I said, you know, hmm. um, I said, so you're all mental level. You're all geniuses. I said, uh, I'll give my boomerang collection. All 15,000 yeah. boomerangs, the person that can answer me, you know, why when I throw a boomerang, 
this way with, our, with, with an arm swept forward, we'll fly low at eye level. And with the arm swept back, it'll climb high and float yeah. down. And nobody can answer it. So, so the complexities are what are there. But that, what I want to know from you is mm. in the people that you've talked to, um, how do you describe how the return boomerang evolved? Do you, do you do it from the hunting sticks? Of course, we're all, you know, that was our religion. That was our life. Yep. Having those hunting sticks and traveling seasonally to find food. And we had yep. to do this. The Aborigines did that, right? And our yep. ancestors, you know, whether we came to Australia or came to America, we were all doing it thousands of years ago. So then what, um, you know, at, how do you describe to them at what point did the return boomerang, how, how did it possibly do what it was doing? Do you have a, a, yeah. a, 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 well, a hypothesis my, or theory? What do you mean? My regular um, support sentence used to always be my teacher, Frank. He was the one, he was a storyteller as well as a scientist. Hey, the a apple doesn't fall far from the tree, Kathy. I just <laughs> have to say that. I just have to say that. Yeah. So awesome. the, the idea of the science of the boomerang it it's been a like um, modern day challenge of you want to confuse your customer now, it sounds strange but if the customer the the spectator they becomes a participant they no longer just look at something on the surface value but they look on the total body image value. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the, the, the body image I'm talking about becomes how big is the rudder that you've just carved out of the end of the boomerang? Or how, how big is the slice of elevator you've chosen for the opposite wing? Yes. And, and then you have high-speed wing, then you have the uh, high lift aerofoil. You you, go, you could go on. I, I always treat it as I go on and on about it when I'm challenged, because science science is the mother of the boomerang. Absolutely. Oh, so that's a that's exactly that's a great quote. That should be the title of a book. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it really should. Yeah, and your first the, now your your first time you threw a boomerang. Come on, now you were ten years old somewhere seven, at school or something. You were seven and a half. Seven and, and a half. And, and do you remember what boomerang you had? It was a, it was one of Frank's original, uh, very heavy black plastic boomerangs. Yes, the, the vulcanized fiber, right? Or was it, it one of the injections? It was the um, ca canvas Bakelite uh, base material. And yeah. then he, he had the, um, the, well, the science was helped by his friend Steve. But overall, um, the Look designs have, have been, yeah, that's it. That's terrific. That's it right um, there. That's, that's the one which, when you, Consider the weight of the boomerang till today's design. Oh yeah, it was circa nine, 1945 plus through to about late um, late sixties. Then Frank had done a lot of um, how you put it, ulterior no alternate alternate yeah. um, measurements. Mm -hmm. And finally, the, the black plastic one was the um, was was the reality check. It was perfect. It was perfect for its weight and size. Yes, and you know, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. look yeah, at that. Like I, grip I, on this. It's got yeah, a really Kat, good grip. Yeah, Kathy, I'm so sorry that you have all that junk lying around your place. We need to talk really <laughs> soon, okay? I, I don't have much junk. Like I've only hey. got. About I'm, five of them. You need to move into Briny's house. <laughs> really? Oh my yeah. goodness! You only have about five of your father's boom range. Yeah. Oh no! I'm gonna. Like I've got these two. Then I've got a couple of. I've got one he made specifically for me, a wooden one. Yeah, that's right. Um, I've got the original blank, and then um, 
Oh, just a few commercial ones, but this, yeah. I like this one the best. Yeah. Well, Brian, what happened to the mold that Frank had? Mm -hmm. uh, oh. Where did that go? Okay, and un unfortunately, a total truth. I'm not speaking out of um, out of uh, any maliciousness whatsoever, but unfortunately, the um, the history was totally lost um, just after Steve died and his widow, she tried to convince the, at the time, the Sydney's Museum to take um, guardianship, you might say, of the mould. Sure. But, but unfortunately... There was not one action that that helped the the mold. It got separated, and no one knows where it went. Ah. It, it was oh. an engineering tragedy. Yeah, yeah that's all cool. this equipment and everything. Just yeah. oh, that's you don't you don't know what that does to me. I mean, I can't imagine. Um, I probably have. At least fifty, Kathy, of your father's boomerangs, maybe maybe yeah. upwards of a hundred that I've collected throughout the years, and I've got yeah. them uh, in the Bakelite, you know, the vulcanized yep. fiber, uh, yep. the whale bone, as they call it. Yes. And I wanted to yep. let you guys know that these boomerang throwers, that you know, modern day boomerang throwers, you know what I mean is once we yep. started the international competition, the Aussie Challenge, and things from 81, you know, by 85, there were some phenolic boomerangs. And of course, Herb yes, Smith started yeah. into it. And everybody says like, oh, well, I missed the phenolic era of boomerangs, the, these Bakelites and, 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 yeah. and uh, 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 um, canvas, paper, and um, linen, uh, epoxy yeah. resin, right? Like circuit board material. And I said, what are you guys talking about? I said, mm. I, said I have boomerangs from Frank Ellen. From Len Onis, Bill Onis, yes. uh, uh, or not, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Len Onis, Bill Onis, um, from from uh, Cecil Burwell, Bob Burwell's wow. father, in yeah. 1929 had that red well one. I know back then yeah. it was very expensive, but I want you to know that the, mm. that um, I you know I have a number of these boomerangs in my collection, and I knew how what a great material it was, and I know it wasn't a cheap material. So when they made these. There weren't that yeah. many, and and they really flew well because of the specific gravity in relation right. to yeah. you know, and and but what I want you to know is that the boomerang world says, oh well, phenolics. When did they come in? And people are saying, yeah. oh, you know, late nineteen eighties and nineteen nineties and stuff like this. And I'm like, guys, no, 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 no. Whale <laughs> bone, whale yeah. bone. You know, yeah. was it, you know, was it was it was at the turn of the century. I have an Aboriginal. Mm -hmm. uh, Western Australia tip, um, pinch tip, not pinch tip, not Queensland, but but the pointed tip fat belly, or we call it a pot belly, yeah. and that yeah. thing is made completely out of white vulcanized fiber, you know, yeah. the, the whale bone. And, and yeah. it's, yeah. it's just so rare. And I know that it was collected in 1910. Yeah. I know specifically I bought it at an auction, and it was like so unique, and people thought it was made of real bone or something. I said, no, no, no. Yeah. It's yeah. vulcanized yeah. fiber. But hey, if just think about that, that that these people they were being made that long ago, and, and in in the the pre plastic era, I mean it was the beginning, the birth of uh, you know high impact high uh, izod impact ratio materials, yeah. and yeah, that's right. capitalizing on. It. And Frank was one of the you know pioneers in that. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. so Kathy, your dad was um, he's an amazing man. Yeah, he 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 really was. He was so gentle and you know like i can always visualize him sitting there with kingsford smith you know oh mm. la -di -da, you know like he was very <laughs> calm you know and uh, yeah. thoughtful he's always ticking over like like you say the apple doesn't fall far but um, yeah he'd, he'd try anything you know he'd sell pies he did the houdini thing you know, in the cage with all the chains and... Oh, sure. Um, well, look at him. He was as tough as, as Houdini. I look at the pictures of him, and there's no way I would ever get in a boxing ring with him, a wrestling <laughs> match. In yeah, fact, right. 
you know, your father, I remember arm wrestling him once and look at it. It's still not fixed. You know, he I remember that. Hope. He I, used to do this breathing exercise every day. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> that was his, like, he smoked like a chimney, yeah. champion Ruby, but he still oh. did this breathing exercise. He That was his, every day he did this breathing exercise uh, wow. because he wanted to build his chest up to get his mm. core strong, you know, for throwing and that. And, and like you say, with the boomerang throwing, it seems to strengthen the core very oh, well. Yeah. Yeah, it right. has to. Yeah. Have you got a six pack? Oh yeah, mine mine is a six pack of yogurt now. Okay. <laughs> See, I, Mine's a jelly a six, one. <laughs> I tell everybody I still got a six pack. It's just a six pack of yogurt. You know? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm still at that I'm at that fighting where I'm trying to get to my girlish my girlish figure, you know, back. I'm just trying, but uh, yeah, you know, no. the side we, handles. <laughs> yeah, the side handles. Hey, those we call those love handles here, okay? Now come nice. on. Let's okay. say it like it is. We got you know? issue. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, one other comment um, about the boomerang's design. How many four-arm boomerangs or six-arm boomerangs have you managed to succeed with? Ah, uh, well, really? Yeah. Um, do you want to know about the Mira Mira <laughs> on the Walla Walla, my collection? Do you know the Aborigines in Queensland? I have some of the... Uh, Really rare, rare as hen's teeth, as right. Robbie Crawl will tell you, right? Yes. Uh, I have the Mira Mira returners, and then I've made many, many hundreds of, of four bladed boomerangs. Yep. And uh, uh, from you know the cross sticks to yes. um, uh, to actually making you know Spider Man or some of my yep. unique shapes that are actually four bladed you know boomerangs, and and yes. I can make them fly as good as they look. Um, because, uh, you know, I understand anhedral and by adding more mass yep. to the center, it causes it to lay out quicker and I can yep. talk your ear off about it and I know exactly <laughs> what to do and how to do it and you yep. know how to do it and I know how to do it and we need to get all this information out to the rest of the world. For any boomerang maker, you know, something's got to be done because I don't that's think there's point. anything really written about that, you know? No, well, that's, that's the point. And one of my purposes of, of both accepting this wonderful invitation for today was I want to make sure that the communication that we have with our our brother, brotherly, sisterly throwers around the world, how many people actually didn't have a chance to see Frank when he was doing his shows. And oh, I would we, love we want to try to give the give the uh, give the boomerang more family atmosphere image as well right yeah in fact did tell me something Kathy do you have any video is there any film of your father through the years I've got, I've got a couple um but they're very short um yeah. one of them was on the ABC there's another one with Montreal and there's one I've got He's in at an oval. I think it's that Parramatta one, Bryony. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. But the Parma Parramatta oval, yeah. yeah. Well, can you, Kathy, can you – I mean, are those available on uh, YouTube? What format are they in? Or can we get them on to uh, – uh, can we get them on the YouTube? I'll look at that this week and see if I can yeah. get them together because I've got one that's on a disc, you know, like a CD disc. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. if you yeah. have it on a CD or a DVD, you, you, could, you could download that. Yeah, um, yeah, right on YouTube. Oh my gosh, you you send that to me, put it on YouTube, tell me it's there, mm. and I'll send it to all the boomerang tours around the world. Everybody's gonna freak out, right. they're gonna go absolutely yeah. nuts. I don't care if it's 10 seconds, I no, don't care. I'll try and get them all together because, like, oh. I, I don't think copyright comes into it anymore. No, <laughs> the, yeah. the, uh, no. the effect, the effect of copyright these days has just about disappeared. Yeah, um, it really has. Uh, but at the same time, um, those who deal in copyright have alternative suggestions of, you know, like, like saying guardianship <laughs> over some of the original material that hasn't been um, edited yet. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, my, my thing is with my stuff too is like I, I want – 
I want what's best for boomerangs. And I always, yeah. when I'm on, when I'm on the board, whatever. And when I, when I do a TV program or I've done this or that, I'm, I throw a four foot colossal comeback and I catch it like bunny reads, uh, Australian toothpick, you know, the massive boomerangs and things <laughs> like that. Um, yeah. you know, you look at that and you go, you know, that's such important history yeah. because, you know, when bunny did that and showing the high torque ratio and everything looks like it's in slow motion, it's coming all the way back in, doesn't show him attaching it, but it shows that the thing comes back. And yep. and it's so important that we have those little pieces of Duncan McLennan and yeah, of, right, yeah. uh, Jackie Byam and yeah, all these you guys. Um, you mentioned Brother Brian Thomas a little while ago. Yeah. I used to have a throw with him as well as with Frank and the rest of the crew every Sunday morning at the Parramatta Park. Oh, wonderful. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's, he was great. Right? Um, unfortunately, I was the one who had to deliver the bad news that, that Frank had died the, on one yeah. Sunday morning. I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was terrible. I I, I got to spend time with uh, Brother Brian. I mean, all over the world, but I I got to spend mm -hmm. it in Sydney with him on Cromer there at the yeah. brother's house. And uh, and uh, hey, he told me. I'll tell you guys a little secret. Grace, you're <laughs> gonna love this. Um, the I think it's the Catholic Church. Yeah. In Sydney. Um, he has been there and he has seen it yes. from the 1700s, you know, from Captain Cook all the way through Yep. as everybody was converted and the Aborigines came, they gave gifts and there is a church or a building on the, mm. on the property that is filled with yep. ancient Aboriginal artifacts. Yes. I'm, I'm talking about the best of the best. And so I went to St. Edward High School in Lakewood, Ohio, and I, I you know, and, and I'm one of nine kids. So I was with Brother Brian. I'm like, okay, so brother, what are you telling me? How, how do we get into this? You know? Oh, Gary, there's no way you couldn't, you couldn't get in. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I'd love to hear you can't. I said, I have a feeling I can get in there. And if I, I said, between Robbie Crawl and I, we're going to get into that building. Anyway, I don't know if you ever heard the story, but, but, but Brian, you might be able to tell me it's true. Yeah. That they're the 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 at least Catholic Church and, and let alone all the other ministry uh, yeah. um, uh, missionaries and things, all this stuff came in and sure lots of it has gone to museums around the world and stuff. But yeah. there's an awful lot of that ancient Aboriginal, absolutely priceless history, yeah. Yeah. and it's been sitting for over a hundred years underground. I mean, in a basement, yeah. Yeah. you know, stored away and. Yeah, yeah. It needs, it, they need to do something. I mean, I would, I'd be there's happy to so, go through. There's yeah, so yeah. much stuff that needs, co, you know, collating and there's, like yep, in New yep. South Wales, we've got yep, all yep. the old cups and trophies and that. They're all sitting in a shed. You yeah, know, there's exactly. hundreds of them. We yes. need, because the, the mm. young ones coming up through the ranks need to realise how important it all is. You know, so history and, like, protection and um like i'd like to see some of that footage you know with the boom game i would love to yep. see that oh yeah the, yeah the the boomerang base game yeah has that. been has been so unfortunately um it's instead of being explained with has been um challenged with and there's there there wasn't enough information available over the last few years um, to, to to encourage and invite those who know what boomerangs can do, but you've got to completely suspend your imagination. Now, that sounds strange, I know, but if you take absolutely no prejudices with you and you start thinking about imagine six people throwing boomerangs at one time and controlling it as a game these yeah. days the throwers and the boomerangs like there are no i don't see any safety risks no, you know, like, we used, like we used right. to get because that you know right. we've got the heavy booms and that but yeah. now with the modern day booms that that sport would take off yeah, like but, you know, and because of the controls, it, it, without you know getting whacked in the head or anything like right, that, yeah, it, yeah. it won't matter, you know, because you oh, can yeah. still run the bases and then yep. throw it back to base, and you're not going to 
you know, decapitate anyone. <laughs> right. Are you gonna, you're going to have to give me the lowdown on this game because this is, uh, you know, we, we've done all sorts of, you know, creative things through the years and developed the sport into what it is. But I know, Kathy, you had mentioned it before and I'd heard about it that there, and Brian, you can tell me that there is this, uh, uh, the way things used to be and how, how yeah. games were played. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and, and then, you know, and then Kathy, you're supposed to say, well, I was, I was, three, I was, I was three when I, I was three when I was playing and I'm fine, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't old enough to play then. I was only oh, little kid. Yeah. But, but Brian, knows, like you've seen it. It was basically like baseball. If you, you run the bases. If, yeah. If you just uh, turn, if you th turn your thinking off just for a Five minutes. Mm -hmm. Imagine, <laughs> yeah. Imagine you're following every instruction that Poppy ever made about safety, and his imagery that he explained to you, the the student, was that you use every part of your body to play this game, but you do not extend any ego yes mind body no, spirit yeah and we the, the few times we had a chance with with all our groups that we had over the years the idea of purposely teaching somebody to throw a plastic boomerang upside down and using both your finger grips and thumb grips and everything else sure you you were expected as part of poppy's group you were expected to never take it for granted and only consider what they're saying is don't take any enemy uh, don't take any um no, no prisoners <laughs> no prisoners well the the game of the the thrower from the central mound to the keepers of each of the plates and the idea of the the judge being able to to work out who caught the boomerang first. Oh, wow. <laughs> the oh, the oh, mind boggles. I, I know what's in my head. And I, I, I've tried to write it out a few times to various people. It just means you've got to speak a different language. Yeah, I was going to say, so a lot of that, the Aborigines, mm -hmm. uh, ceremonially, uh, had yep. that. Now, my question is, where did you uh, receive this? Was this something that Frank, uh, Kathy, did your father develop this, or was it, um, yeah. is it something that was learned or That's created through a dream time experience? I don't what? think so. As far as I know, Poppy set it up just so that we could have no discrimination. That's right. Uh, not yeah. specifically for that setup. Yep. Yep. They, they were all mates, you know, and they all used That's to right. play yeah. together. And he set that up so it was like a Sunday game, you know, everybody yep. could play around. Yeah. Um, we needed, we yeah. needed 12 people at the time. We needed 12 people to know that you're each going to have your turn um, and – you're borrowing your best guess of the weather. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. And sure. you add the weather to it like a recipe. Oh, yeah. boy, yeah. I, I remember seeing some of the photos and that you could see Poppy was turning the whole thing around so that you, specifically, like you say, yeah. for the weather. You know, That's you could right. see the whole team just all of a sudden, you know, move. Oh. So yeah, all, sure, from the wind change or something. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah with the yeah. right conditions, because it was. Yeah. It looked to only be a fairly small circle. Like, yeah. it didn't look to be a large throwing circle. I, like, I think we, for memory, I think we measured it was thirty in those days, thirty yards from like thirty yards diameter, which yeah, gave you yeah. room for four bases and a mound, and it was just. Um, tri trial and error until you got until the group sat satisfy themselves. You you work to the dimension that you be best uh, can put to it. 
And this was done in an individual basis or a team basis? Was it team basis? Team, 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 team basis was the goal, but individual, you, you could have two people play boomerang bass. Sure, sure, I see. Wow, somebody popping in here too. Judson's back. I, oh, I reckon that'd Thanks. be good fun to, st especially, you know, with all the children coming up through the ranks. Yeah. yeah, I reckon it'd be fantastic for them. And by the way, what's the youngest age a person can compete in the World Cup? Oh, it doesn't matter. Age is not a problem. Cameron uh, was competing in uh, uh, in uh, uh, he's only I think seven or eight years old. Um, he was competing. You guys remember Baby Ben? Uh, uh, you remember uh, uh, Bunny Reed's grand uh, grandson? Uh, who yep. came to America and was throwing? He was three years old at the time, whipping wooden boomerangs. I mean, what a what an amazing wow. thing back in back yeah. in eighty three, eighty four. Yeah, um, but uh, uh, yeah, but I mean, really, it's something. Uh, uh, the age is it doesn't matter really. I mean, these kids, no, no. Really see it. you have to see it to believe it. They're really incredible throwers, just like my kids. They all grew up with boomerangs and they were all throwing. And now I've got Logan, you know, the boomerang ninja. Right. <laughs> you know. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So they, they, they're really, really, you know, um, really good. Plus I, you know, I do a lot of my motivational talks and I do a lot of the school presentations yeah. and I do after school programs with the kids too. So I have mm -hmm. my room rings and backyarders and verticals. They all get to make them, they get to paint them right, they get to, right, you know, right. uh, and, and they get to throw and catch. And, and so it's, it's history and it's art and it's phys ed you're the quarterback yeah. and the receiver, the pitcher and the catcher, you know, and you're um, and it's such an esteem builder. A kid throws a boomerang, it comes back and he has your catch. And, you know, before that, they were saying, oh, I could never do that. And it's like, yeah. no, I, I can't wait. I've been waiting to meet you all my life. You know, and, you know the then, same for the old days as well, or, you know, vets oh, yeah. or injured people or sad people. Because yeah. Yeah. Yeah, everyone can do it. Right. If you're in a wheelchair, you can throw a boomerang. That's right. You know, also, you, got this, just, you got this much motion, just, you get a boomerang yeah. to come right back. I just thought of another example. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing glasses. Kath's wearing glasses. Yeah. Chris is wearing that. glasses. <laughs> How many more? You don't know. Hey, but, now look at him. See that? Uh, yeah. That's We're all the same team. Okay. Well, now you you are you are a walking science proof of the boomerang can be. Absolutely uh, used as a mental stimulus. If you're wearing glasses, your eye focus comes through your optic nerve. You watch the boomerang turning and spinning and come back to you. Your eyes have been working overtime for that 30 seconds. But Imagine a child with a, a visual image difficulty, mm -hmm. and you can tell them you'll see if you you use your imagination as a teacher to communicate to the child. Have some fun seeing how fast you can make the boomerang spin, and you play a game with it. Right. Well, I, I used to wear bifocals. I used to wear contact lens. I had quite a few operations on my eyes over the years. And the saviour of it was when I was with Frank, the first few times he taught me each weekend to throw some boomerangs, he was able to encourage me don't care about what others think of you seeing the boomerang differently and you follow it differently than somebody else because your eye muscles work according to your leftover metabolism. <laughs> Whatever is there yeah. you got from birth is all you got, but you can have operations to suit along the way. But the first one was Frank taught me how to watch the boomerang fly. Yep. Yeah, that's really, really great. You're 
It's funny how things that we think as boomerang throwers, and we were, you know, I'm known as a you know, boomerang man in Ohio yeah. or Chet Snoffer and these people that we think the things that we developed mm. were like, hey, I got a great idea. This is what I found out when I taught people how to throw to get mm. more spin on the boomerang. I told them to knock on the door. You know, I use these yeah. things, and uh, terminology and stuff. And I said, this is all stuff that is nothing new. It's just, I didn't know Frank. I didn't get to meet Frank. I didn't get yeah. to meet Bill um, yeah. you know, uh, and, and, and to know that those guys, they already been there, done that, you yeah. know, Cecil Burwell <laughs> and Bunny Reed, they had all done it, you know, way, way before us, you know, yeah. and um, it, it's really impressive. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, you can see that and the way you speak, Brian, about, uh, uh, you know, I, it gives me a great visual of how, how much fun it was back then. Cause you're throwing oh, yeah. mostly traditional boomerangs and you're throwing some pretty heavy, thick stuff. Yeah. You know, natural elbows, you know, the, the <clears throat> moguls and acacias and black water roots, or even, yeah. uh, you know, the, the phenolic materials, the uh, epoxy resins and stuff, yeah. the vulcanized yeah. fiber. I mean, that's some, some serious stuff. And then, you know, the spin rate of that and, and uh, wow, I mean, I know because I've thrown them. I collect them, yeah. you know. And, yeah, well, and, and my, the um, thing, yeah. My teacher at, at Qantas with the aerodynamics, was the first person to come up with the high-speed, high-lift wings. But importantly, more than that, just that, we worked out how to mix the um, fiberglass resin to make the finishing product of the hand-held part to balance ah. the, the forward tip. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Do you have, do you have one of those? I've still got them at home. Here. Do you? Oh, you're yeah. going to have to show that to me at some point. Yeah, I got to see that. That's so cool. With you and Bryony and um, Danny, I think the combined knowledge and the gifts that you three have with teaching mm. and how the kids love you and all the different, like it's, it's so good to have you all, like, and today we were going to show um, Danny's got some footage. He was going to show us all how to make boomerangs, but we've had trouble uploading it. So we'll upload mm. it later. But what Danny's yeah. doing all over the world, it, mm. it, like he's like a young poppy to me. Like he's, <laughs> yeah. you know, like a ever ready bunny, you know, like yeah. a man. Never stops. No, it's so talented. It, it, whole family. Hi, Sean. You know, like. Writing everything, cooking everything. They're such a brilliant family, and to yeah. be able to represent the sport so beautifully, mm. yeah, it's. Yeah. I admire everyone that's yeah. doing that. Well, you know, I can tell you guys from experience uh, of all the world championships that I've been to, and all the boomerang throwers around the world that have come and stayed with me. And you know, we had this talk before, and I said mm. it's amazing family. Mm. Um, it's it's this eclectic yet all interconnected mm. people that beautiful. come to come from yeah. different cultures different languages different countries different professions yeah. and we all come together on this one and fascination with yeah. boomer the yeah. returning guru some of them are the rusty harding the jonas romblad Okay, the aerospace okay. engineers that are crafting, yes. <laughs> and yeah. they may not win a tournament, but they can make a maximum time aloft boomerang out of unidirectional carbon fiber, bidirectional Kevlar, micro balloons, and epoxy mm -hmm. with enough dihedral that when you throw it, it corkscrews hundreds of feet in the air, it turns over and drops like a maple seed, and the world yeah. record is 17 minutes, six seconds from time release to time of catch. It's like, yeah. what? And when now the distance boomerangs, I mean, yeah. you know, it was David Shumi. There in uh, in Brisbane, he was he was making these distance boomerangs, mm. and he made these question marks called the Voyagers. And what yep. we did was he took right-handed airfoil on the top and put a left-handed airfoil on the bottom. Why? Yep. Trailing edge meets trailing edge, lead edge meets lead edge. So now the air mm. molecules over the top are yep. very little. There's no, yep. right, so it becomes this powerful gyroscope. Now you've got mm -hmm. the super elliptical distance, and then Manu Schultz is throwing. 238 meters out, 238 <laughs> meters back. And when I yeah. show people what 238 meters is, yeah. where, you know, we're in America, three football fields almost, 
And they're like, no, nah, no human being could do that. No, <laughs> you know, come on, that's crazy. Yeah, look at and 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 you have the craftsmen. I mean, not only the competition mm. of being, yeah. uh, you know, the wisdom of knowing what to throw in what condition, no matter what Mother Nature throws at you. Um, it's a lot of wisdom of, of, of making the right boomerangs that can handle any condition. Yeah. And yeah. we in Ohio are the, very good at that. Yeah. And then, and, but the last thing is, um, you know, a craftsmanship of steam bent laminated mm -hmm. boomerangs like Al Gerhardt, or, yeah. or to look at uh, uh, Fred Malmberg and uh, Steve Loki and, and, and all these people that we, we lap join exotic woods together and inlay mm -hmm. them or steam bent them. And they're these beautiful pieces of art that are sanded to 12,000 grit. And I'll take yeah. my rings off, my boomer rings. I'll take my <laughs> boomer rings off, and I'll I'll throw it. I'll catch it, and I'll hang it on my wall because you don't want to throw it again. You don't want to scratch it. You don't right. want to just <laughs> fabulous. But you see, you get to be that carpenter. You get to be the scientist. You get to be yeah. the artist. You know, you can make a dolphin boomerang. Michael Jordan, Goofy, Donald Duck, Spider Man, Roadrunner, yeah. you yeah. name it. <laughs> right. So, so we can make those things work, and then yeah. you're you're the you're the competitor, yeah. and you see how all these people come together and we mm. all contribute to this passion and this love. And I just yeah. so love it, you yeah. know, and you, you can't imagine. I mean, it's just, it's, it's way too much fun. I, I could never, <laughs> I could never see my life without having the boomerang family and being able to travel all over the world. Like I have, yeah. it's just amazing, you know, and everybody's family. There's nobody yeah. hating anybody or, or, uh, you know, like, I'm I'm upset that Brian beat me in accuracy. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I'm yeah. slapping I'm slapping you a high five because yeah. because yeah. I said, Brian, you know this. If we're in competition and we're throwing in certain wind condition, right? Yeah. Or some yeah. condition on the field, it's not me against you. It's you and I against Mother Nature. It's <laughs> what it. she dishes out. And guess what? If you out smarter and you drop eight, eight, uh, you know, eight bullseyes or something, you yeah. got 80 points just like that. I mean, I'm slapping you high five and, and bowing you. I'm going, hey, you know, I, you know, because you you beat Mother Nature, you beat it. I'm not upset, you know. It's like you know, we're all doing what we love to do, and yeah. and we're out there as a family, and we're helping each other, and because we have enough, you you guys have been there in those horrendous wins, hmm. Melbourne in 2000 at the World Championships. I mean, you know, we had an average of 32 miles an hour gusting up to 60 yeah. miles an hour. I mean, you know, you, you could throw a curlbar and it comes back. What's the big deal? Hey, Ma, look at the lawn chair. It's a boomerang, you know? It comes like back that's, some... that's such one of the beauties I find in it. You know, like James Hoy, you know, he, he makes all of his booms, all sorts of different ones. But he mm. lives in a really super-duper windy place. So oh, all yeah. of his mm. booms are built for wind, high wind. Yeah. Yeah, and then, right. you know, like when – because I've got a couple of them, but, but like – He's built the conditions into the boom, mm. you know, to share within all of all, you know, yeah. all. Yeah. Uh, I can't explain again, but no, I, I know what you're saying because yeah. let me tell you, I grew up in Ohio, and you know, the, the, the boomerang world revolved around Ohio. You got Chet Snoffer, Greg Snoffer. Uh -huh. John Gorski, Mike Dixon, Gary Broadbent. I mean, mm. our state alone could beat anybody else in the United States. Mm. We put a team together, and yeah. and, and, and uh, we'd be happy to take on the world. But I tell everybody, the more you put steel in the fire, the stronger it gets. Mm. I never had a day where I went, oh, it's too windy to throw today. <laughs> I went out and I experienced it. And I had my bag of rubber bands, my drag devices. I had my, my binder clips. I had duct tape, mm. and i make flaps. And I would experiment, experiment, experiment. Mm. And I knew that I had to have, because Cleveland, Ohio, is the third windiest area in America. Oh, right. And so I had to go out and practice in it, and, and I became really good at it. And the guys mm. in Ohio said, when we go to tournaments and it's windy, other people would say, you know, they're from California or Texas or somewhere, and they'd yeah. say, and you say, you guys are so lucky. You had lucky, you know, wind conditions. You right. had chet winds or something like this. And I say, mm. let them keep thinking that, you know. <laughs> it's just, I got my wind stick in the ground mm. and I know what I'm throwing and what I'm doing. Mm. And they think the wind calmed down for 20 seconds for me to make five throws and catches and fast catch at 20 meters yeah. in a four meter bullseye. <laughs> where, where in actuality, uh, that boomerang is designed to drop like a brick in that wind. And it, it, yeah. it, there's hardly any aerodynamics to it. 
I'm throwing it hard and over vertical. I call it a, a humpback throw, like throwing over a wall. And that thing is mm. perpendicular with the wind as little as possible. And it just dropping all the way through and it comes right in. And you just do that five times from the bullseye and they stop the stopwatch and they go, wow, you know, that's yeah, amazing. Right? Mm. Yeah. yeah right? Sorry for interrupting. It's like, no. you know, when I'm dousing in that, you know, all the conditions have to be right, the same mm. sort of thing. When when you're throwing a boom, it's almost like visually seeing how you how you are at that moment in time, mm. you know, and how you're unified with our strings that I'm not allowed mm. to talk about. Yeah. But, um, it's it's like another way of seeing inside how you are on that day, you know, like because sometimes yeah. you can't get your head into it. You know, so something's upsetting you, or you're not grounded. Um, it's it's, a, to me, it's it's the most greatest therapeutic thing. Out. You know what? When you throw a boomerang, mm. it's an extension of yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. it's you living. Yeah. yeah, it's it's you living. Look, the Aborigines. I see it. I know what they were doing. It's therapeutic. I used to say, you know what? It is so great a boomerang. You don't have to go and compete in a competition. You go out and you play with yourself. You're dancing yeah, yeah. with the wind. Yeah, you're yeah. dancing with the wind. It's you and Mother Nature. And guess what? When you're barefoot and you're grounded, yeah. right? We yeah. talked about unify. electromagnetic fields and it, unify, it unifies you. And you think the Aborigines were idiots? You <laughs> think you read about what they went through and what their life was and all this in, in the history? They're geniuses. They're greater than any of us could have ever been. I mean, they they gave me the greatest gift in life. They gave me the boomerang. I pay homage to all of them. I bow to them. And I met the Aborigines who looked at me and said, you know, you know, who are you, a Yank, to come down here and tell me, an Aborigine, what a boomerang is? And I, they were totally offended. I said, oh, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. We got out on the wrong foot here. You know, I, they had been so downtrodden and so beaten, beaten down, you know, from a from a racist standpoint and stuff that, that I said, wait a minute, you know, you don't understand. My entire world is boomerangs. You know, I said I wear boomerangs, boomerang watch, I have boomerangs around my neck. My phone number is 49 boomerang. <laughs> License plate on the car is boomerangs. And I go through this whole yeah. thing. I said, Do you understand <clears throat> that it's your it's your ancestors, it's your culture that gave me the greatest gift in life. They gave me the boomerang. They gave me the most complex language in the world. And and then and then finally the guy, you know, they look at me and they go, All right, mate, I'll throw a boomerang now. You know, <laughs> I mean, these guys are 50 some years old and they've never seen a boomerang work. Then they're Aborigines, you know? I think wow. a lot of what Poppy was saying, because his main aim was, I call it all for one, one for all. Yeah. And, we, you know, like that's exactly what he was talking about, the unification without segregation and yeah. for all abilities, you know, yes. no, no matter the age and all inclusive. And yeah. to me that's what he meant with his unification. Um, yeah. Well, and, do, you remember, do you remember the, the George Bing? George Bing. The name? I've heard his name. Yeah. Well, George Bing was Poppy's Indigenous friend. And every Sunday, along with our group, he would come along and throw with our group. But George Bing lived in Parramatta Psychiatric Centre for most oh, of that's his good. Yep. Yep, most of his forty seven years, whatever it was. When when Poppy died on the sixteenth of <clears throat> March, George died two weeks later. Wow. Yep. Because George had only Poppy to be his shadow. Yeah. So Poppy was the first to explain to most of us why we are adopting George, an Indigenous person, before the Indigenous was ever used as a yeah, word. But there, there was no right. segregation until Montreal. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right. And that was in uh, 1960? 67, was I think. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. 68, yeah. And yeah. and that's kind of why I got a little upset with that other business that about the returning booms. Oh, because, yeah, yeah. Because one of the sentences was almost exact to the letter yeah. 
yeah. as what was said back then, which caused all of the segregation that followed. That was one of the main reasons besides mm. them, you know, saying the wrong thing about what the booms were returning boomerangs, you know, and calling them the other thing. Yeah. But, uh, like, because it was crushing, you know, before that mm. everyone played together. There was no drama, you know. Yeah, like, right. but, but after that I got picked on severely at school. Like it segregated the schools instantly. Mm. Um, you could see it through history where not just that, whatever else was going on back in the time must have been mm. linked to it. Yeah. Um, but you could see it throughout history after that, you could see the segregation occur with so many different things. It was really sad. Yep. Um, like it broke Poppy's heart because they're all, we're all friends. Everyone's yep. one, you know, right. everyone's united yep. as one. And then um, this business came up and it kind of wrecked everything for a long yep. time here, but yep. in a good way, as far as the boomerang throwing fraternity grew yeah. internationally it was a, a plus you know yeah, that's um, right. but it, not on our end yeah well, even my father like he he helped a lot over the years driving us as kids around doing all the different boomerang throwing shows and things but dad my father was the only person who was um, allowed to view George's body at the time for the police to say yes this is george bing and he was signed my father signed him signed him out as um friend of george bing yeah. wow and, and what was your yeah. father's name your father's charles, full name charles william henry chatel charles william henry chatel yeah yes wow charles very william nice henry. Wonderful. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna to have to look this guy up. This is wonderful. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm really I'm impressed. As this is really fun. Well, right ladies on. and gentlemen, I hate to say it, but we ran out of time. Uh, okay. it's been a wonderful show. Like now, Grace, always. Grace, you need you need seriously. I'm thinking maybe I don't know, um um, there's got to be a concert all or something to calm you down because I don't know. There's something you just, you know, don't you notice it, Kathy? I mean, gosh, I mean, he starts talking and he just won't ever shut up. I just, I'm, I'm amazed. I mean, oh, he's I'm just fascinated. He's just fascinated. It's just wonderful, yeah. you know. Isn't it great? No, it's too much fun. I appreciate you, Chris, and giving us this uh, platform. It's, it's, it's been great. It's, it's lovely having both you on the show once again. It's, it's been a pleasure. It really has been. Thanks Thank for the invitation. Yeah, yes. thanks so and, much for coming on. Yeah, and we'll and add the, we'll add the footage later on, Grizzy, somehow, and put yeah, the we list sure up will. There. Yeah, and Kathy, yeah. Brian, uh, Brian, you're on, uh, you're on Facebook, and and things I'm like on that. E email. On email, I knew it. See, he's like Jeff Lurie. I know. I'm going to have to call you up. That's what I'm going to have to do. Um, yep. Kathy, you, you have his info. You can get it to me. Uh, yep. we'll, no problem. Yeah, and we have it here. So okay. Yep. Yeah. I'll, I look forward to talking to you again, guys. I really appreciate Thank it. Everyone. Thank you so much. Yeah, and Thanks, coast honey. to coast and around the yeah. world. That's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, we'll catch you on the next right. show. Bye, hey, remember, do what you do in the world to come back to you just like a boomerang live to boom and boom to live. It's all about finding a bliss. <laughs> naughty boy Love this guys. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. We'll see you.